Hello and welcome to the Mayo Clinic. I am Dr. Bashar Akel, Chair of our Transplant Program in Arizona. Throughout the month of April, we will be honoring those that have donated a life-saving organ and have provided hope to countless others through organ, eye, tissue, blood, and marrow donations. We also want to take the opportunity to encourage you to learn more about becoming an organ donor. Today, there are over 104,000 individuals awaiting the gift of life-saving organ in the U.S. In Arizona alone, there are nearly 1,500 on the waiting list. And tragically, every day, 22 of those people die while waiting. At this time, during Donate Life Month, we are encouraging others to register and become donors to help provide hope and life to someone else. So please visit donatelifeaz.org forward slash MCH to learn more about becoming an organ donor. We would like to take a moment now and share with you some powerful stories of lives changed through the gift of organ donation. My father is from a small town in Mississippi. And as a young man, he was part of the Great Northern Migration where a lot of African Americans moved to northern cities for better opportunities. He always imagined himself bigger than the small town that he was raised in. I get my ambition from my father and my compassion from my mother. Almost 17 years ago, I had the opportunity to donate a kidney to my father. Prior to my kidney donation, I received uh, a corneal transplant. When faced with having to deliver difficult news, I find it helpful both to myself and also to the patient to share with them that, um, that I'm a patient uh, as, as well. I had the opportunity to join Mayo Clinic eight years ago, and for me, absolutely no question that this is a place where I want to be. In 2022, we did our 500th heart transplantation at this institution. A month ago, we completed our very first triple organ transplant, a heart, liver, kidney. So some really exciting things going on. We'd like to continue to be a beacon of hope where patients from all over the country, all of our patients have their own individual stories. But Mr. Pennick, he was in a situation where he was incredibly ill, near the top of the list, and still had a downward trajectory. I believe a month to the day that he came through the doors of Mayo Clinic, after being in an ICU for that period of time, a donor offer finally came through for him for a heart and a kidney. And I kept telling the nurses, I got two little girls to live for. Dr. Hardaway, he literally saved my life. He saw me as more than just a patient, and he let me know that he was in my corner, even if the news might not have been good that day. I always felt like he had my back, and I'll never forget that. So when I see someone like Mr. Pennick being restored and on this journey of recovery, the amount of satisfaction that that, that gives me is overwhelming because I know what it, how it felt when I felt I discovered my purpose, but none of that can be really effectuated without the buy-in of a multidisciplinary team of individuals that really care and have the best interests of the patient at heart. And we do that every single day here at this institution, every day. Back when I was 52 years old, uh, I had started to notice a uh, shortness of breath. I mean, I've been active all my life. Uh, I, I would work out, I, I enjoyed yard work and hiking, but uh, slowly but surely I got to the point where the fatigue and the shortness of breath was troublesome. My diagnosis was dilated cardiomyopathy, uh, which I, I keep telling people it's a big, big word for weak heart muscle. When I was about 57-ish, about I had a cardiac arrest I ended up having to have a left ventricle device, the LVAD, put in. You know, that's basically a pump that goes into the heart and the chest. You get a, a control pack that you can wear at your side. Couldn't do what I wanted to do in life anymore. In December of 2020, I got uh, put onto the list for a transplant. Uh, three months later, March 19th, I got the call. They had a heart available for me. And I came here to the Mayo Clinic. I had the transplant done on March 19. My recovery was good. Uh, I was fortunate. You know, after transplant, though, I got stronger. 
uh, my fatigue got better, my, I, I worked myself back in with you know, some strength and some conditioning, and uh, you know, life's been good. This gift of life is just amazing. I've been able to travel in the last two years. I've been up to Spokane, Washington to visit my parents and my brother. I've been to Illinois to visit my grandkids. My wife and I have been to Mexico several times because I love the beach. Been to Washington, D.C. You know, to top all off in January of this year, I went to Argentina. And from Argentina, I went to Antarctica. Did the polar plunge. It actually jumped into the Antarctic Ocean. The heart uh, survived it just fine. And it's, uh, it's, all, it's all because of the, this transplant. It's all because of this gift of life. It's all because of the organ. We basically went on a date. Blind date. A blind date when I was 17, I think. Trish and Jeff Robinson met when they were in high school. When I met him, I just, you just get that feeling of, oh my gosh, he's the one. Soon after, they married and began building a life together. Then came the unexpected news when Jeff went to the doctor. And he asked me how long have you had a heart problem? And I did, told him I didn't have a heart problem. He goes, yeah, you do. Jeff was diagnosed with congestive heart failure. After numerous surgeries, doctors told Jeff he had less than two years to live unless he got a heart transplant, and that can take years. But doctors at the Mayo Clinic in Arizona had another solution, using new transplant technology called the organ care system, or heart in a box. Well, this technology is gonna give patients the ability to get transplanted potentially faster. We're gonna be able to go out further distances to retrieve organs from donors and bring them back in a, in a safe fashion. So it's, it's, it's incredible. It works like this. Traditionally, when a heart is donated, it's placed in a cooler for transport. Doctors only have about four hours to get the heart to the recipient. With this new technology, a donated heart is resuscitated and placed in this box, which keeps it alive and beating in a human-like state. This increases the window of transport to 12 hours, allowing doctors to get more hearts to more patients, like Jeff, who became the first person in Arizona to undergo a heart-in-a-box transplant. And the Mayo Clinic team would be the first in Arizona to do it. And everybody was just very amazed to, to see this device working. And even when we brought the heart back to, uh, to the operating room in Mayo and rolled it into the operating room and were doing our final evaluation of the heart, people were coming over and looking at it. And these are people that have been in medicine for 20 years, and they were just all marveling that we had this opportunity to do this for this patient. Two months after surgery, Dr. Brian Hardaway said Jeff was progressing well. He's doing well. He's having the anticipated uh, post-transplant course uh, in good spirits, getting around okay. Things are looking good. I'm elated. It's, it's awesome. It's a second chance. And I just have to thank him from the bottom of my new heart. <laughs> we are honored to help individuals like these with a second chance at life. Remember, one donor can save up to eight lives and enhance over 75 more through organ, eye, tissue, blood, and marrow donations. So please, once again, visit donatelifeaz.org forward slash MCH to learn more and become an organ donor. And for those of you who are already a registered organ donor, we thank you in helping us save lives. Thank you so much.